Eric Johnson, thank you for joining me. Eric Johnson is a biowarfare weapons trained Army veteran who was also a prototype for chronic fatigue syndrome when the CDC originally coined the term chronic fatigue syndrome. Eric, thank you so much for joining me and for all of the help that you've given me on my mold journey. I have probably gotten the most useful information from you out of every mold resource that I've ever found. And I just think that you're a plethora of untapped information. And I know that you have tried very hard to get doctors and researchers to respond to evidence of toxic mold stachybotrys at ground zero for chronic fatigue syndrome. Will you, will you tell us a little bit of the background on that? You bet, thank you, glad to be here. Um, I see your kids behind you with the lightsaber doing a little interview interruption here. So yeah, um, I was um, made sick in the uh, military, stationed in, in Germany. And thanks to um, having somewhat of a education in mold prior to the 1985 Incline Village outbreak of mystery illness, I was um, quite familiar with it. And I was surprised that all the doctors, the Center for Disease Control, all the researchers that came to examine the situation were completely unable to conceive of the idea that a room full of sick teachers could have anything to do with toxic mold. So you had experience in the military that gave you insight and information about toxic mold before the Lake Tahoe outbreak. So let's touch on just a little bit of what that experience was, and then let's touch on the outbreak. Um, I was sensitive to mold pretty much my whole life, even as a small child. I had a, some awareness of it, but wasn't really particularly sick until I wound up stationed north of Germany in a uh, bunker built to be Hitler's forward headquarters for the invasion of Great Britain. Kind of an unusual uh, moldy concrete bunker. There was no sheetrock, no wood. It was entirely um, concrete, but the basement armory flooded and uh, the uh, cardboard boxes all grew this black mold and my entire unit started getting sick. Um, in fact, we made history for being the first uh, nuclear missile unit to be taken to be withdrawn from active duty for a rate of illness. About 70% of the uh, unit were on sick call with a strange flu that they couldn't figure out. Uh, I talked to my commanding officer about it quite a bit. I think he uh, was pretty suspicious of the mold too. We discussed it. And he was so concerned about the high rate of illness that he wondered if we were under assault by the local terrorist faction, the Bader Meinhof gang thought that perhaps they had snuck some sort of biological weapon into our water or somehow dispersing this in such a way that my whole unit would be affected. But um, he called the Biological Warfare Investigations Unit to come out and check. And they looked directly at the mold and they thought nothing of it. They just said, well, it's, it's bad, but clean it up and um, we'll, we'll see what happens. So guess who gets detailed to go down to the armory and, and carry all this mold out? Yeah, I was part of a squad that had to go down there and clean it up. And within uh, an hour or two of carrying these boxes out, my uh, squad leader looked over at me and said, Johnson, you better get out of here or we're gonna have to carry you out. I was obviously quite ill from it. I staggered upstairs and collapsed in my bunk and couldn't move for about 24 hours. And since that was directly from handling toxic mold from this 
black, nasty looking mold, that <laughs> narrowed it down considerably. I had no further doubts that this was the stuff. The, um, my commanding officer said, if the rate of illness didn't abate by cleaning this up, uh, he was going to order an emergency evacuation of the unit. And fortunately, after some time, the rate of illness did go down and we were returned to active duty. So it apparently worked too. And people in my unit had all kinds of strange fungal infections, viral diseases, somebody had hepatitis, anything, it would, uh, it would go crazy. And they never did figure it out, but cleaning up the mold did seem to fix it. So this mirrored the situation that I saw in 1985 when a strange flu hit where I was living in Incline Village. And a lot of the buildings where I'd had an adverse reaction in the past were exactly where the clusters of mystery illness happened, particularly Truckee High School. Um, one teacher's lounge, which was incredibly bad and had been for many years, was actually the focus of the Center for Disease Control's investigation because it was so odd that one room would get, everybody in the room would get sick and nobody in the rest of the school. Other people caught the strange flu, but they all recovered. But in that one room, all the teachers became permanently ill with the, what they called a mystery mal malady or Tahoe mystery illness, the flu that never quits. So I uh, got sick by this flu, but started avoiding mold at this time, started to recover. And Dr. Paul Cheney called me into his office one day and asked if I wanted to be a prototype for a, a new syndrome. And I told him, no, I, that, that would be a bad choice because for one thing, I have this pre-existing mold illness and I'm already getting better by doing mold avoidance, taking special efforts to stay away from these bad buildings so he should get somebody else. But he insisted that I had the immunological parameters detected by his testing, the uh, chronic active viral infections, which made me a perfect candidate and um, basically forced me into volunteering. And I had quite an argument with him. I said, well, this mold problem is going to really complicate matters considerably. He said, no, scientists are, you know, capable of figuring this out. It, it won't interfere. And I thought, well, considering that the clusters did occur in moldy buildings, it's almost like a duty to tell the CDC and medical research about, the, about this because they obviously have no clue about the toxic mold. So I'll be performing a service by helping to clear up this mystery. And that's when I found that there was a bit of a problem that nobody was willing to accept this evidence. And once they had examined the room and determined that they couldn't find any cause for the teachers getting sick, they wrote down in their medical literature that there was no cause found, no clues, nothing to follow up on. And instead of perceiving this as a reason to look harder, everybody gave up. Researchers literally took this as some kind of set of instructions or an edict to be enforced rather than inducement to keep looking because obviously when everybody gets sick in a single room, there's gotta be something in there. After they gave up, the uh, school authorities conducted their own investigation. They called in um, expert mold testers from Sacramento who drove up the 100 miles to Truckee and sure enough, they found the toxic mold Stachybotrys. And this perfectly fit the parameters of a toxic agent that was capable of suppressing immunity such that a, a virus could get out of control. And I approached pretty much all the top chronic fatigue syndrome researchers for many years, and not a single one of them was willing to reconsider their, their verdict, their decision the mold had nothing to do with it. 
as far as they were concerned, it was entrenched in the literature that no cause had ever been found, and that was the way they intended to keep it. So you see behind me, I have this poster, which is a really remarkable document. Unfortunately, it's backwards because of the camera, but it's like a, a document from history. It was made in 1997 by a researcher at Lawrence Livermore Lab who was looking into toxic mold and had heard about the um, new, fairly new chronic fatigue syndrome. And he put the pieces of the puzzle together. And he made up a list of all the early documented cases of toxic mold and put them together with the symptoms to see if it fit the profile for chronic fatigue syndrome, which they did. There were only a few of them at, at this time. So you could pretty much fit the entire history of toxic mold and a comparison to chronic fatigue syndrome on one poster. And if researchers look back, they could see the development of the idea that this might be a real possibility. And he presented this to chronic fatigue syndrome researchers and they blew him off just as much as they blew me off. So I told this researcher, with your evidence and my status as a prototype for the syndrome, we can put the clues together solve at least this portion of the mystery, we may not be able to solve the mystery of what that flu was that was going across the country at this time, but at the very least, we'll understand why the clusters occurred in these sick buildings. And he had already, by 1997, been beaten up so badly by the chronic fatigue syndrome researchers that he declined and said, I, I wouldn't even try it. These people, they're not listening. If you attempt to do this, they're going to tear you to pieces. They will rip you to shreds. I go, well, they, they wouldn't do that. I mean, I'm a prototype for the syndrome. I was there. I was in the room. I have documents that con connect uh, a toxic agent with the physical presence of clustering of, of illness. That would be crazy for them to throw away such good evidence. Well, uh, he was right. And that is exactly what they did and what they continue to do. And is that why you, is that what you're referencing? I, I hear you say a lot of times that you have never found an honest doctor or researcher that you've approached to give this information. And this is, this is the backstory of why. Exactly. Why you say that. Um, because basic science 101 is that a researcher must respond to relevant evidence. That's just the given. If uh, there's a cluster of sick teachers and after years of finding nothing, a toxic agent is identified by experts, mold experts, the, the best ones in the business in that very room, this is obviously relevant to the very core of the mystery for which the Center for Disease Control was called. I actually sure. wanted to mention that with you too, because I know that there's times that you went to doctors and told them your observations, which you've pointed out to me, is the first part of doing science, making an observation. And when you've shared your observations, they've, they've shut you down by saying that it's anecdotal. Right. Or the, uh, my other favorite is that, well, that was a long time ago. Well, it was documented by mold experts a long time ago. And facts do not go stale like old bread. They're just as fresh and relevant today as the instant they were found. Mm -hmm. So this mystery, the cluster that actually was the, the center, the core of why the um, chronic fatigue syndrome was coined, remains resolved, unresolved because researchers are literally keeping it out of their way so they can clear up chronic fatigue syndrome to be safe for their own theories. And that's not on the science, that's fraud. So you are of the opinion that chronic fatigue syndrome is one of the ways that mold 
or toxic mold actually manifests as illness. And so chronic fatigue syndrome is mold injury, right? Essentially, yes. And the researchers are only focusing on the viral component and they're not willing to look into how those two things go together and make each other worse. Correct. Okay. And chronic fatigue syndrome, if one actually reads the Holmes 1988 definition, it states that researchers and doctors are not to think of this as being the name of a bug, like you get a CF, CFS virus or you have the CFS illness. Um, Dr. Gary Holmes recognized that this was a trap and they would just put the name onto anything that causes fatigue and it would never be solved. So he wrote specifically that patients who have these unexplained symptoms must be constantly reevaluated to look for abnormalities which are not explained by anything in the medical literature. And if anything is found, any immune abnormalities or any signs of what might be causing this to follow up on it. And that's exactly what, what chronic fatigue syndrome doctors are refusing to do because something unknown, abnormal, did crop up, and now they want to keep that out of the way so they continue to sell their, their vitamins, their supplements, their, um, promote their, their various personal theories, all to the exclusion of explaining the actual mystery that started this whole mess. You just went over something that I think the average person does not know because, well, maybe they do. I didn't know this. I learned this from you. What I learned from you was the reason that a syndrome is developed is to exercise it as a research tool. So this syndrome was developed to put a label on the thing that needed the research. And instead of looking at the full picture, we basically have different researchers trying to pin it on different viruses and they're getting funding to do that but they're not looking at the whole picture. Is there a toxic mold component to COVID long haulers? Well, I tried to join their groups and find out. And I um, mentioned that there was a toxic mold factor in chronic fatigue syndrome. And they immediately um, started deleting my messages and saying that my information was unwelcome. So I left their groups and gave up that some of the symptoms are matching from what sure. I'm observing. Well, if you look at what uh, toxic mold does, just as in my military unit, it depresses immune function. So it can result in just about anything cropping up. When you have a no immune system, whatever you happen to have, any bug, any virus, any infection, it's gonna be worse. And that's what doctors are going to notice first. Mm -hmm. So if you have toxic mold and uh, somebody's got trying to recover from COVID-19, it seems impossible that it could fail to exacerbate the condition somehow. Right. Eric, thank you so much for your time today. I know that you and I have planned to do a series of these. So we are going to do moldy Mondays and we're going to deep dive into all of this stuff because this is just this is just the tip of the iceberg you have mountains and piles of information about this and I know one thing that we both want to do is get this story told so thank you for your time Eric all right thank you very much